what is causing the breaches? Is, is there a breakdown of controls? Are there controls missing? Um, what's your, what are your insights there? We are using outdated technology to protect ourselves. So this technology goes back 15 to 20 years. So there are newer companies that are coming out with updated technology, which can slow the hackers down. Of course, you can't stop them because there are thousands of these who are trying to get in. So it's a combination of a targeted effort and outdated technologies. Of course, there are control failures also, where uh, the training that was actually to be done as part of a control implementation, the training did not get completed. So the employees did not know that they were not supposed to click uh, an email telling them that they had either won a lot of money or uh, a shipment was delivered to their home. And so, so a combination of outdated technology, targeted effort, and employees that are unaware of these risks who are clicking on these emails have, have brought this to the forefront. How significant is that forefront? Because some of the research actually states that IT and security, you know, extremely high, significant priority, but that maybe the priority still isn't as high as it should be uh, at the executive management and the board level. Are, are you still seeing this? Now that all of these high-profile breaches are happening and companies' reputation is at risk, the whole aspect of IT security or cybersecurity, whatever you want to call it, has, has been elevated. The board, the executive management, there was a line item for IT security. They used to look at it, they used to approve it and move on. But now it's not just the implementation of IT security, it's the reputational risk. If there's a breach, then legal fees, remediation costs, a number of other items which are financially related are causing the executive management and board to take, take notice of it. Are you seeing that there are still boards and committees out there that are struggling to get the appropriate amount of information and the right information in their hands? NACD has targeted events, webinars going on to educate the board members. Similarly, at the executive management level, the CFO conferences, the CAE conference, there is adequate exposure of what cybersecurity is, how to deal with cybersecurity, how do you implement controls. So at various levels, the targeted information is now being delivered to the stakeholders. But it took some time, right? Cybersecurity has been around for over 40 years, and in the last two years, it has been front and center. What can internal audit do? Uh, are they in a position to provide information, uh, to provide assurance over the processes in place? Um, what other activities can, it, can our internal audit departments do to address this key risk? I believe if you actually look at internal audit function in a company, it's a very unique role. It's a role that actually is a bridge between the control implementation which is happening at the department level and all the way to the board. They have a, f a, a, a solid line to the board. So they are in a very unique position that they can leverage their position within a company where they, they can educate the board, they can communicate to the board where the gaps are and help management get adequate funding for control implementation. Internal audit needs to be treated as a partner that can communicate all the way to the highest levels of a company. And so CIOs, CFOs should actually leverage the CAEs to get the message across to the board level and the audit committee.